So, firstly, thanks for coming in and speaking to me today. Uh, for the viewers and listeners joining us, uh, we've got David Kennedy. He's actor, most notably known for your work in, in Hollyoaks. What was it like work, working in, in, in Hollyoaks? <laughs> Uh, well, I had, I had a great time. I had a, um, I really enjoyed it. A uh, lovely bunch of people, a um, lot of fun, and um, I ended up dating some quite nice women. So, uh, <laughs> Marion, Marion, one of them. Yeah. Anyway, on screen, obviously. No, it was, um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a giggle, and um, and it gave me a reason to move to Liverpool, and I've stayed here because I just love the city. So. Um, you know, just love being up here, being by the sea, and uh, so decided to stay. Are you a football fan then? A little bit, a little bit, yeah. Um, I'm a, I'm a Spurs fan for me sins. Um, <laughs> going through the, the going through the, the the grinder at the moment, I can tell you. Um, but um, hopefully, hopefully things will sort out. I've, I've got a horrible feeling it's going to be. Uh, Few people being sold in the uh, in the summer, and um, I think the manager might go. I've got a feeling he'll go. I uh, won't be too disappointed about that. But um, I think we just need to start again. I was watching the um, PSG game the other night, and it was just unbelievable. It was just incredible. Uh, even though they they didn't win on the night, but just the football they play, and um, oh, just just amazing. What what a strike force they have, and. Uh, just thinking that used to be our manager. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Anyway, I'm, I'm just glad uh, the. Uh, I think we need to start again. Yeah. Rebuild someone, someone new, dynamic and, and fresh, or Brendan Rogers. <laughs> I'm just glad you you haven't been persuaded by the the Liverpool lot. Um, like you, it's not. I'm not proud to say I'm a United fan at the minute, but well, at the minute we're doing all right. But uh, the last few years have been a bit a bit painful and. Uh, I don't need to remind you, but our game, United v Spurs, earlier on in the season, isn't one that I like thinking too much on either. The uh, the 6-1 I'm oh, We can talk about that one if you want. No, I'm no, happy we'll... to talk about that as long as you like. We'll, we'll skip it. I'll, I'll, uh, we won't speak about the recent game and it, we'll avoid that that one earlier on in the season. So all right, I think, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the deal. Yeah, going back to Holly Oaks, what, what was your character like? You know, what, what were your sort of personality traits? Were you a... Uh, Sort of a, a good guy, a bad guy. About the sounds of it, you're a, a ladies man. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely, ladies man. Oh, and they just had a. They were queuing up around the block <laughs> to uh, get onto my boat. Um, I was a sort of. I was I suppose I was a kind of lovable rogue. Um, I mean, it, it, the character changed so much over the years. When we first turned up, we all lived in a. We lived in a um, like a motorhome. <laughs> That's six of us in there, and then. Um, we sort of um, wormed our way into the uh, the hearts and minds of everyone, and uh, no, it was it was great, and we we got involved, and uh, it was lovely because they made the Savage family quite an important part of the show, which was lovely with, with um, Dodger and Will, and um, it was no, there was some good good few years there, and then um, when the when the boys left, um, then they kind of I don't know, it was a bit uh, I, I I thought oh I thought I'll be leaving then, but then they asked me to stay. And then they put me with Sydney, and uh, which was nice, and I had a great laugh with Steph. And working with Steph and Amanda was lovely, and um, and then yeah, then uh, was it two two and a half years ago now? They said, "Oh, we're going to get rid of you." I was like, "All right." And then I had my um, yeah, my my accident in the swimming pool. Um, on on the theme of sort of storylines and that, what what's your sort of favourite one during your time with Hollywood? Oh, blimey. Um, oh my god, there's so many. I can't, I'm a fan. I can't, I can't think what's my favorite one. I mean, I really enjoyed, like, I got married to, to uh Cindy about three times, so that was always nice because we go on location. So, uh, I think the last time we got married was down at um Van Dudno, and that was, <laughs> it was nice to get, get out of Liverpool for a little bit. Um, used to see a lot of the actors, like, some of them going off to to Ibiza and, and like, you know, think, oh, why can't we go to Ibiza? And then they say, Dave, you're going to Van Dudno. I'm like, all right, okay. Uh, so, uh, but um, yeah, I mean, there were a lot of fun, a lot of fun storylines. I mean, there was, um, oh my God, loads, loads of crazy things. So many, I can't think offhand which one stands out, but there were, um, 
lots of good time. I, I, I remember we weren't featured that much in it, but when um, Will got married to, um, oh my God, what was her name? Bianca. And uh, we went down to, we filmed at Peckforton Castle and that was fantastic. Um, and I remember, um, I remember him pushing her out the window. <laughs> now, I didn't enjoy that episode just because of that. <laughs> but it was a, no, that was a great thing, loads of stunts and um, really lovely place to film. And everybody was all dressed up nice. But um, oh, and there was no, I'll tell you another one, <laughs> sticks in my head. <laughs> Why was it? I think when um, Cindy went mad on one of the various many occasions when she went a bit loop de loop. And we, I don't know where, what we were doing, but we were filming in. Um, in some big park somewhere and we all ended up we had to go in this lake we had to all jump into this lake and i don't know why i enjoyed that because it was horrible <laughs> it was march it was freezing um but we've done some mad things uh, you, you just touched on before that obviously now you, you've left the show um what's it like being sort of told you're going to be leaving and and you know what was it like being sort of killed off if, if you put it that way of a TV show so you know how they go about telling you how much notice do you get that kind of thing <clears throat> well they just um, they, the, the big boss calls you in and just says uh, we've decided to get rid of you and you're like okay uh, not a lot I can do about that um, so I mean I had about six months notice um, I mean I, I, was, I was disappointed because I thought I was going to be staying for another year or so I'd been told and then suddenly they changed their mind. We know, and I think it was just the timing. They seemed to get rid of quite a few characters around that time that I left. Um, so nothing, not much you can do. I guess they wanted just to freshen it up or change it. But um, no, I was disappointed, and um, I, I, mean, I loved all the reactions on Twitter and stuff when when I my, on my exit, as you know, I got electrocuted in the swimming pool, and everyone was saying, but, you know, Dirk can swim. He lived on a boat for twenty years, so. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, he can swim. Of course he can. But um, so no, it was disappointing. But um, you know, life goes on and uh, get on with it. And um, it's been all right since. So um, onwards and upwards. You've acted in sort of over 50 television dramas outside of uh, outside of Hollyoaks as well. Um, what do you love about acting? You've done your research. You've done your research. I know. I've, <laughs> I've come prepared. Um, so Good lad. What, what do you love about? acting i mean a lot of people sort of when they're growing up they want to be um nurses all this and i i wanted to go into acting but w once i hit high school the confidence just went downhill from there and then since going to uni it's, it's gone back up but what you know what do you love about acting and sort of have you been in it is, is it all you've ever wanted to do no not at all i mean I, I didn't get into it until my sort of mid-20s uh as a kid i was really into sport and um uh, I, I like rugby and football equally. I really like rugby, and then, um, uh, but I thought this is never going to happen. And it was pre, you know, before it was professional. You couldn't make a career out of it when I was at school. And then um, I wasn't good enough at football, as you'll see if you come to the game on the July the 18th. Uh, you'll see. Um, and, and then I wanted, you know, then of course I wanted to be in a band, <clears throat> so I played bass guitar and. Uh, wasn't good enough to do that but I wanted to do something a bit creative I wasn't sure what um but I I, I didn't know what I wanted to do I left school when I was 16 and, and I, I kind of I was scratching my head for about eight years and then I kind of fell into it a little bit and um just thought oh yeah I, I, you know I'd seen some plays and I thought I'd give this a go why not and uh, <laughs> I was just very fortunate I went off and applied for, for a drama college and I got in and um Touch wood, it's been it's been okay. It's been all right. It's been quite kind to me. So uh, yeah, that's how it happened. But it's I think it's one of those things where I, I kind of feel a bit sorry for kids today because I feel there's so much pressure on them to kind of know what they want to do at a young age. You know, by the time they do their exams, and, yeah. and I think I was quite lucky. Maybe I don't know. My generation, it, it, there was a little bit more time. You could sort of find yourself. It wasn't this expectation. You need to know what you're going to do with your life by the time you're you know, 17, 18, you've got to know what you're doing. Uh, maybe it was just, I don't know, maybe it was my family who didn't mind me kicking around the house, but I, I don't know. But um, yeah, it came late. So, uh, and then, so yeah, I didn't start to my mid-20s and um, uh, yeah, 
been a mixture of stuff that, you know, started quite a lot of theatre and then telly and bits of film. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then the Oaks. Um, so, obviously, you mentioned this can be included in theatre mm -hmm. as well, sort of in, in the early days, but um, including theatre, TV, anything that you've done sort of on camera, what's been your favourite thing to, to perform in outside of Hollyoaks and why? Um, it's, it's really hard to sort of, I don't have a favourite. I think um, yeah, but it's, it's also different. I mean, I love, TV is great because it's, you meet so many different people um, and it, it's very different from, from doing theatre, from doing live stuff. Uh, and I, I haven't done any, any live theatre since for 11 years now. 2010 was the last play I did. And strangely enough, I'd probably say that was probably one of the most interesting things I ever did because it was a, we did a play uh in london and it was a, it was a very political play and it was all about the um the, oh, it, was, it was about in 2010 the general election i mean you're probably too young to remember this but in london in east london particularly and also i think in areas like where we're going to be playing football like up in in um you know like burnley and blackburn around there the bmp were quite a major force in british politics mm -hmm. and people were quite frightened about them getting in and um, the consequences of, of that and in London they kept using the expression um, embarking, embarking in Dagenham in London they were going to, if the BMP got in they were going to lift the drawbridge and basically you know isolate themselves off and it was quite scary at the time anyway so I did, a, we did a play about about the, 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 the BMP and, and why was the BMP so appealing to um, particularly you know sort of like I don't know working class regions of the UK and uh, but the what was most interesting about it was that Billy Bragg the musician he came in and he played live during the show and uh, so that was wonderful but that was a great that was a really good piece of yeah it was a great story it had a, it was really important and um, so I mean that's one of the standout things for me um, but that's theatre so only a few hundred people saw it unfortunately yeah. um, but, the, but, you know, TV and film is great, you know, filming is nice, you put on a nice costume, sometimes <laughs> you film in a nice exotic place. <laughs> have, have you ever thought about going back and doing and doing a bit of theatre? I know um, Steve McFadden off EastEnders, I think, um, I I didn't know until I think last year or the year before they actually did theatre outside of, of EastEnders, um, so I, did, I weren't sure if it was something you still did, but... If you know, if you don't, have you thought about maybe going back to that at some point? Yeah, if it, I mean, if the, you know, if it comes along, if the, the you know, it's quite interesting because I think people outside of of, um, of television stuff, they kind of think that you just sort of walk from job to job. Um, unfortunately, it's not like that. Um, so you know, I think it depends on who you are, obviously, but you know, you still have to audition for stuff. And, um, it, you know, it's got to make it work. So, yeah, I mean, if the opportunity came along at the right part, I'd, yeah, I'd love to do it again. Um, be a bit scary, not having done it for about 11 years, but no, it, absolutely. It'd be great to, to do something like that. Um, yeah. Um, so if there's any theatre directors watching, give me a call. He's waiting, waiting to get back into it. Um, I've just mentioned Steve McFadden and EastEnders. You featured in there briefly in two different, um, sort of short roles in 2002 and 2006. What was that like? And again, a similar question to before, would you go back if they asked you to for, you know, a, a new role potentially? Yeah, it was, it was great. Um, I think that the first time I went in, uh, I played this sort of dodgy character, Dave Roberts, and that was great because I was working with Barbara Windsor, which was amazing. I mean, I was really nervous about it. I remember going in. And, uh, and I was like, oh no, this is, this is, oh my God, I'm in the Vic and I'm working with Barbara Windsor. And, um, and I remember she came up to me and she said, um, where are you from, love? And I said, <laughs> oh, um, I, live in I live in Walthamstow. And she went, oh, you're all right, you're one of us. And from that moment, she was absolutely lovely with me. And it was like, I thought, oh, thank God I said the right thing. Um, so <laughs> it, was, it was great. It, it, was, it was, I mean, it was very high pressured, you know, it's, it's very kind of, you, you know, get on with it, do it, quick takes, quick turnaround. So that was quite an eye-opener because that was the first time I've done anything like that. 
because most drama it takes you know they take a lot longer you do lots of takes until they feel it's right but um but it was great everybody was lovely and um that was that was yeah that was a lot of fun smashing up the queen vic at the end i remember and then i went back a few years later um to play sl a slightly different character <laughs> i don't know what happened there but and then i'm working with um ross kem and, and steve mcfadden and uh, I, I had to let them rough me up do you know what i mean it was like it was like no you know i thought no all right i'll, I'll make you look good i'll let you i'll let you rough me up so uh, <laughs> yeah i remember they roughed me up stuck me in the back of his jag but uh, but that was good it was it was great you know, it was a great place to work there nice bunch of people and what, and, yeah, what are you do i'd love to go back there yeah <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be good i'm um east Enders is one that i i watch a lot uh my partner's a a big Corey fan, so we're very much sort of in with the soaps now, um, more than ever. Um, right. what, are you, what are you doing now, or or you know, looking to do now? Uh, are soaps, you know, still one of those things you're looking at going back to do? Mate, I'm, I'm you know, listen, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a jobbing actor, it, whatever comes along. I mean, since leaving the Oaks about two and a half years ago, I've done, I've been very lucky actually, I've done a couple of really nice dramas. I was in a thing called White House Farm, which was a true story about the um, the, the murders in this farmhouse in Essex. Um, and that was great, that was really nice. And then um, last year I did a, a thing called Honor with Keely Hawes, another true story about a, a, an honor killing. Um, really heavy subject there, but it was, um, it was great. So I've, it's been good to get back into doing dramas again. Um, so it's whatever comes along, whatever comes along. Um, who knows? Um, Wait for the phone to ring. <laughs> what What are auditions like now compared to sort of when you first started out? Is it do you still get sort of nerves, or is it a case of you you kind of know what you're expecting? Oh. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's changed a lot because um, particularly with the last twelve months, because in the old days you you turn up, you walk in. And you read in front of a camera with a casting director. Sometimes the director is there as well. But with the, in the last year, everything is like self tape now. So you sit at home and uh, you, you film it, and you, you get someone to read the lines, and you film it on your phone, and then you just send it off. And um, it's it's quite strange because it's uh, you, you don't you don't get any feedback. You have no idea if it's um, it's quite tricky because you don't know you you, you can't really gauge how are your, uh, you know, your performance in any way. If you're in the room with someone, they'll say to you, Dave, that was great, try it again, but do it like this, or, or do it like that, or, uh, you know, make it this, make it that. But when you're doing your own self-tape and sending it in, it's like, you, you have no idea. Um, so, and then you don't get any feedback. So you just have to think, oh, well, <clears throat> for some whatever reason, they didn't like me, so. Uh, <laughs> so, but, um, Sorry, was that what you mean about how it's changed, or were you meaning about how? Yeah, so so how, how people it's... perceive me. So no, so so when you've uh, when you first started out doing sort of when you first broke through into TV rather than theatre, what how has it changed in sort of auditioning? Is it is it still for you personally though as well? Is it a case of are you still dead nervous for it, or are you kind of at the point now where? you can approach it, you know what level you are, and if they like you, they're going to take you, and if, if they don't, then you'll just move on to the next thing. <laughs> uh, I, no, I think, to be honest with you, mate, it's like every time, it's it's like new. I mean, I've, I've been, what year are we in now? 2021. I've, I've been doing this game for 29 years, and... Um, I get an audition and it's just like it really is like oh oh god this is it's quite nerve-wracking it really is i think in some ways that's a good thing because it means you still care about it yeah um i don't i think people who just go oh, yeah whatever whatever um you know good luck to them um but uh they may not be in that truthful because it's um it's really nerve-wracking it is um i mean i think you get obviously the longer you do it, you get more confident at doing it, and uh, you just kind of you, you you kind of know what to do. But it's still very um, it is very nerve wracking. It does it, it does doesn't particularly get easier, um, which is maybe that's a good thing. 
Yeah, I'd say so because I mean, for me now, I've been doing well. I've, I've, I'm in my second year at uni, but I've done like hundreds of interviews at this point now. And before everyone, I'm still like, there's still those nerves that are there. Um, but you know, for you, like you said, you've been in the game for for 29 years. What are, what tips? can you give to people sort of younger people who could, or anyone that's just breaking through into acting, what tips can you give to them who, uh, who are going into auditions? Oh, uh, wow. Um, I think it's the thing is you, you've got to be yourself and um, you've got to really do your homework. You've got to learn. Don't think you can just like breeze through it. You know, if you get a, you, you know, you've got to learn your script. Don't think, oh, it doesn't matter if I don't really know it. No, you've got to learn it. You, you've got to put the hours in. I think the, the, the problem at the moment we have, because of so much reality TV and um, with programmes like The Voice and Britain's Got Talent and all these things, I think it's great to give people the opportunity. It's wonderful uh, who may not otherwise, you know, have access to, to that. But at the same time, I think it, 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 it can be quite dangerous because I think people think, oh yeah, anyone can do it. You know, anyone can just say, oh yeah, I want to be, a, I want to be an actor or I want to get into a soap or I want to do this. It, it must be quite easy. Who do I have to write to? And you kind of go, actually, it's not that easy. You should really, you need to train, you know, and then you need to try, start and, and build up. Um, but I think some people just think it happens overnight. And for some people it does, you know. Um, some people it, it, it can do, but I think you've got to be, the reality is that you've got to graft, you've got to put the time in. Um, but just be yourself, be nice to people. Because you never know who you'll meet on the way up. You might meet them on the way down again. So just be nice to people. Um, and, um, and and you've got to work hard at it. It ain't just going to happen, you know. It's, it, it's very rarely it just falls in your lap. So... Uh, just and keep going because the, also in this game there is so much rejection um all through right the way through you know even even you know even famous people there's rejection all the way through particularly when you're starting out obviously so you've just got to kind of think don't don't take it personally just think i wasn't right for it i was either too short or or, or too tall or i was too old or too young or Whatever it is, whatever the reason, don't take it personally. It's not about you. It's um, it's the director's taste. It's not that you're no good. It's just someone's taste. They just don't quite see it that way. And you've got to keep reminding yourself of that. Because if you don't, you can you can uh, you can go a bit loop the loop. I think that's that's great advice. I mean, in in, in any industry, I think the um, whether they say it or not, I think bosses always have an idea of who they want in, and it's about fitting that and you're never not you're never going to really know if you're going to fit that it's just um it's about talent but i think in a lot of things it's about luck as well in terms of fitting their plans um i think you've done quite well like we said over over 50 different sort of tv dramas you've been in which is fantastic and you had a, a large stint at hollyoaks as well um but coming away from that side of stuff the reason we're talking is because of the the charity game for you why did you want to get involved mm. in and i mean you said you might not be the best of players, but I mean, I think if you see some of the names on there, I don't think you'll be too bad on the day. Oh. <laughs> That's all right. I just, as long as I stay away from Colin Hendry, I'll be all right. Um, <laughs> it's uh, no, it's it's great. I got involved. Well, strangely enough, it's just from Hollyoaks, um, they got they had a team, and we started playing. I was playing charity games with them, and from that, different people asked me to play for. For different charities and it's just it's wonderful it's a great thing to do um i mean it's lovely to you know put the boots on and, and run around a bit it's lovely to to raise money for for causes and if you, you know give something back i know it sounds a bit of a cliche but it's it's a really nice thing to do um and it really it's just you know it, it costs so little you know for, for my time or whatever more than happy to do it um so i've been working yeah we're involved with several different charities um, uh, so I played, I think, so with Hollyoaks, we first played it was a few years back when we played um, with against Colin and, and, and all of that lot. And um, we played them a couple of times. I think the first time they completely, they spanked us. And then I think the second time we actually, we beat them, I think, 3-2. We held on and it was amazing. And then they played us again and they, they did, they, they spanked us again. <laughs> um, but, um, and then I've, 
play for a charity, supporting charities, FC based in Bradford, really good charity. So, um, and then there's um, a variety of charities and, you know, people ring up and say, will you come and play for us? I said, of course, if I'm free, I'll, uh, I'll come and uh, have a run out. But I just, no, I think it's important and it's nice. And, and um, all the games are great. People, I think the crowds, they love to see you and um, it's nice to meet people, have a chat, have a photo. Um, so it's, it's a good thing to do. It's important. And there's, um, I mean, I've, I've spoken to Colin already in an interview and he's mentioned there's, some sort of rivalry between himself and the Hollyoaks boys. Is that something you'd uh, you'd agree with? <laughs> well, what, what I like about Cod, he he's, he takes it so seriously, and I really like that. He, he's um, of course it's for charity, but he, he does not like losing, and I think that's why the first time we played him, and and he beat us, and he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the second time we beat them. And he did not like it. <laughs> um, so, uh, but it's great. It's all part of it. It's great. It's, it's um, yeah, I think we just really enjoyed it when we beat him that time. And uh, we couldn't believe it. It was amazing because the lineup they had, you know, ex-Blackburn players. And I mean, we couldn't believe it. And uh, we held on. And uh, yeah, it was close. I think it was about 3-2. And, um, but it was, yeah, it was, that was special. That was special, Colin. <laughs> no, there's definitely um, definitely some sort of rivalry there. But in terms of sort of positions and that, what what type of player are you? A defender, a midfielder? Oh God, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I normally play sort of right back, left back, yeah. And uh, the, the legs are starting to go, so um, yeah, it's kind of right back. And, and I used to make like runs up front, but I think those days are over. So I think it's <laughs> it's right back, stay at the back. <laughs> so on um like corner duties, I'm assuming you'll be trying to avoid marking Colin then. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll take the post. I'll, I'll stick to the post. <laughs> Especially no one. Yeah, I think it's probably something I do as well. To be fair, um, how yeah. do you know sort of Tony Cartwright? Obviously, he's he's organising the event and he's the the sort of bloke reaching out to everyone. How do you know him? I think we met from the, the first time when Hollyoaks, we went up to Darwin um, and played uh, against Colin and, and the legends there. And uh, that's the first time I met Tony. Um, and then we sort of became mates and he's um, he's asked me to do a couple of little bits and pieces for him. And um, and uh, yeah, and, and that's, yeah, that's how, that's how I know him, purely through the football. And uh, he seems to have a, he seems to be a good lad. His heart's in the right place. No, yeah, he lo he loves he's sort of like the um so you've been in sort of acting for twenty nine years and his his charity I think he said to me he's been doing for sort of twenty seven years and I think for the last few years he said this will be the last one or something like that, but it it never is. Um so you know yeah you, you might be you might be getting a phone call again next year for a, another one. Yeah. Um, he, he told I think he told me that about a year ago saying, Oh, this is the last time I'm doing it. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what everyone I've spoken to said the exact same. So I think he's had the same conversation over and over again. And I think he's telling himself mentally that, yeah, this will be the last one, but he just he just can't stop going with it. Uh, with sort of, obviously, you're going to be meeting some of your former core stars again on the day they'll be playing and a lot of other soap stars as well. Who are you most looking forward to, to seeing on the day? Oh God! I, I mean, to, to be honest with you, but I, I'm not sure who is going to be there. Um, I'm. It'd be great to see them all. I mean, I still see some of the the, the boys from from the Oaks play football in the weeks sometimes, and uh, so I still catch up with them. Um, but no, it'd be lovely to see them all, and um, but also to you know catch up with Colin and and all of those boys again, and uh, just be great to see. You know, it's it's great. I mean, on, on the pitch, it's great. It's competitive and. Uh, also, we have a bit, bit of a laugh sometimes, but then afterwards, it's just, you know, it's, it's lovely, have a few drinks and, um, you know, say hello to everyone. Unless we win, and then Colin will be really moody. <laughs> I'm so, I'm, I'm assuming that, um, so your relationship and friendships with the former ex-pros like Colin, I'm assuming that uh, he's very different on and off the pitch. And, uh, uh, and like you said, th does the result affect all of them, or is it just just Colin? No, it's just Colin. <laughs> <laughs>
I remember the first time when we played Darwin, um, very first time when we came up, and I remember we, we all arrived, and all the Hollyoaks boys, and we walked into the, the changing rooms, and uh, they were already in their changing room, we could hear them, and we all walked into ours, and I just put my head into their changing room, and I went, all right, <laughs> and Colin looked at me like this. <laughs> I thought, oh, all right, okay. But then afterwards, they're all absolutely, you know, nice as pie. So, uh, no, it's just, it's a bit of fun. Well, uh, we'll definitely see whether the good or the bad of Colin Andrew, I think, on the, on the 18th of <laughs> July at Bamber Bridge. Uh, a two o'clock kickoff, just for a reminder for those listening. Uh, Lens 11 will be taking on a team full of TV All Stars, which includes today's guest, David Kennedy, who uh, we'll see marking the pause from corners, which uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing. <laughs> uh, to get your tickets, please follow not the just, link. Not just corners. Just full stop. Not just just corners. Next I'm not all the way through there. <laughs> just stand next to the keeper. <laughs> that'll do. That'll do me. Um, to get your tickets, just follow the link in the description of the video. Uh, the money's going to four great charities, um, which I'll, be, I'll link that video as well. Uh, if you're interested in sponsoring on the day as well, um, I believe there's still some players up for grabs for both sides, I believe. Uh, but I'll leave an email address in the description for Tony Cartwright. You can speak to him more about that. 